Hey, I'm Lindsey Thomas with the National Deer Association. November is over, and with it, the peak of the rut is behind us in most of the country, except some parts where there's a later rut. The scrapes are going cold, the woods seem empty, we're not seeing as much deer activity, and certainly not as much rut activity as we were just a little while ago. But sometimes some hunters witness what they call a second rut. A few weeks after the main peak, they might see a second flurry of bucks chasing does, a second flurry of vocalizations and even bucks fighting. Scrapes start to be worked again. It starts to feel like maybe something's going on in the woods again, about four weeks after the main peak. What's going on there? What is the second rut? Is it a real thing? Well, it can be. In many areas, hunters can see a second flurry or a second small peak of rut activity, usually about a month after the main peak. For most of the country, that's going to be in December. It's not as intense as the main peak, but it's certainly noticeable to many deer hunters. There are two primary causes of what we refer to as the second rut. One of them is a good thing, and the other one is a not so good thing. We're gonna talk about those two causes, what those, how those uh, cause deer to go into a second rut, how to identify that, which one you have going on where you hunt, and also whether there's anything you should do about it. First, let's talk about the bad news, the bad case when you are seeing a second flurry of rut activity. That's when adult does are coming into estrus 28 days after they first cycled when they weren't bred the first time they came into estrus. So every November or whenever the rut peak happens where you hunt, that's when most of the does are coming into estrus. They are receptible to breeding for about 24 to 36 hours. And if they're not successfully bred by a buck during that time period, they'll cycle again 28 days later in an effort to get pregnant this year. Now that's not a good thing. In a normal, healthy deer population, you've got a roughly balanced sex ratio, a roughly equal number of bucks to does in the woods, and there's enough bucks to get all the does bred on their first time around. So you have very few, if any, adult does that aren't bred the first time. In a case like that, you, you're not going to see adult does coming into estrus 28 days later. So if adult does are the cause of a second rut where you hunt, that's not a good thing. You don't want to see that. Uh, in most cases, you want all of your adult does to be bred the first time around. How do you get into a situation where your adult does aren't being bred the first time? As I said, it's usually because there aren't enough bucks to go around and, and take care of all the breeding. That usually happens when hunters locally have been harvesting a lot of bucks and seldom, if ever, harvesting any does. In most locations across time, you want your doe harvest to roughly equal your buck harvest, the numbers of deer that you're removing. And when you do that, your, your population out there, your sex ratio is going to be roughly balanced in the numbers of bucks and does. It also can happen when a lot of the buck harvest pressure is on younger bucks. If very few yearling bucks are making it to two or three or older ages, and there's very few adult bucks in the population, again, this can result in some of the does not being bred on their first cycle during the main peak. There's a lot of reasons why we want most does to be bred on their first time around. Uh, for one reason, we want uh, most of the fawns, if not all of them, to drop around the same time in the spring when nutritional uh, availability is at its peak for the mother and her milk, for the fawn that's going to be weaning on natural forages. You want that time to be um, ideal for all fawns. Secondly, if most of the fawns are all dropping around the same time, it tends to swamp local predators. There's only so many fawns they can eat in a short period of time before those fawns are old enough to escape them. So for those and other reasons, there's, uh, we, we definitely want a balanced sex ratio out there to ensure all adult doves are being bred the first time around. From a hunting standpoint, it's, it's good for hunters because when uh, bucks have to compete to breed with other bucks, they're more visible. When bucks are outnumbered by does, a buck does not have to move around as much to find an estrus doe, and so he's not as visible. So for all these reasons, you'd like your sex ratio in the area to be roughly balanced between bucks and does. It doesn't have to be a perfect one-to-one, -one, 
But if you take these steps I'm talking about, reduce harvest pressure on bucks and make sure you're taking about the same number of does, that will correct itself and, and you won't have this issue of does not being bred on the first time around. The other cause of what we call a second rut or a second flurry of rut activity later in the fall is when doe fawns are reaching a body size that allows them to achieve sexual maturity in their first fall and breed for the first time. This does not happen for every doe fawn. When I'm talking about a doe fawn, I mean a, a doe born this year. She's about six months old or so in the fall during hunting season. And if they achieve a certain body size, in the south it's roughly 70 pounds, in the north it's about 80 pounds, but a doe fawn that reaches that size in her first fall will achieve sexual maturity and come into estrus for the first time. When she does that, it usually happens later than most does in the population. So it'll be a few weeks after the peak again uh, in December for most of the country. And when a doe fawn comes into estrus like that, it's going to attract the attention of bucks. You may see scrapes getting worked again. You may see chasing. You may see breeding activity. You may see bucks vocalizing and competing with each other. Anytime there's a doe of any age that's in estrus in the woods, bucks are going to key on that and they're going to be moving and trying to take advantage of the opportunity. So doe fawns only achieve sexual maturity that quickly if they're on good nutrition, if the habitat is high quality, if the deer population is in balance with that habitat and each individual deer has high quality nutrition, if that doe's mother was a healthy animal. All of these factors play into that. If she had high quality milk, if that doe fawn was weaned on high quality forage, she has a chance of achieving that critical threshold of body weight in her first fall and breeding as a doe fawn. A little bit later than most of the population, but nevertheless, she will come in to estrus. That's a good thing. When the second rut is caused by doe fawns coming into estrus, that's a good thing because it shows you've got high quality habitat, your deer herd is tuned up and in healthy condition, you've got a roughly equal sex ratio, bucks to does, and things are looking really good. So if doe fawns are causing the second rut, that's a good thing. How can you tell which situation you've got where you're hunting when you witness later rut activity? Well, if you can get your eyes on the doe that bucks are chasing, attempt to age her. Are you looking at a mature adult doe or are you looking at a rather juvenile looking doe fawn? At the Deer Association website, deerassociation.com, we've got information that'll, that'll help you look at the body characteristics that can help you sort an adult doe from a doe fawn. But generally, you know that a doe fawn is going to have younger looking features, a shorter nose, shorter face, shorter neck, a smaller body, and yet long legs, like a young deer. Whereas an adult doe is going to have a heavier body, shorter looking legs, longer nose, longer neck. In a group of does, it's easy to sort them by age. You can tell generally the older does from the younger ones by those body characteristics. If it's a lone doe you're looking at, it may be a little more tough. But if you witness bucks chasing does late in the fall, try to age her, estimate, are you looking at an adult doe and a mature doe? If so, then that's a doe that wasn't bred the first time around, and again, not a good scenario. If the doe that's being chased by bucks looks like a young deer, looks like it was probably a fawn born this year, earlier this spring, that's a good sign and a good scenario because that's a doe fawn that has achieved the threshold of body weight this year to go into sexual maturity and breed this fall. A second way to determine whether or not you've got doe fawns that are breeding in their first fall is to pull a jawbone from every doe that you harvest during the fall and estimate the age of those does using the jawbone. Now, when you pull the jawbone of a yearling animal, a yearling buck or doe, you're gonna be able to tell that with 100% accuracy because you're looking at tooth replacement patterns, not tooth wear. Uh, so any yearling's jawbone is going to 100% give itself away. And if you kill a yearling doe in the fall, she's one and a half years old, and she has milk in her udder, that indicates she had a fawn this year. Well, you're looking at a doe that was bred the previous fall as a six to eight month old doe, a fawn of the year and therefore she was bred as a fawn. So again, if you kill a doe that has milk in its udder and she's one and a half years old as the jawbone gives away, then you know she bred as a fawn. And again, that's a good sign. 
It's always a good idea to pull jaw bones from every deer you harvest, and particularly does. Look for those ages and it can reveal information about the health of your deer population. Now we've got information at the Deer Association website on how to age deer jaw bones, but I'll give you a quick lesson on how to spot a yearling. In the lower jaw bone, there are six molars. Count back from the front, one, two, three, to this third molar here. And if that third molar has three sections or three cusps, then it's a temporary tooth. It has not fallen out yet. And that's going to be a yearling deer. If there are six fully erupted molars and the third one back has three cusps, that's a one and a half year old deer. If that third molar back has two cusps, that's a permanent tooth. And that deer is at least two and a half years old, possibly older. That's when you would begin to look at tooth wear. So that's how you spot a yearling. And again, if you kill a yearling doe in the fall and she has milk in her udder, that means she bred as a fawn. In areas with high quality soil and high quality habitat and healthy deer populations, you actually can see a fairly significant number of doe fawns coming into estrus and breeding in their first fall. And this is a good thing. So if you're out there hunting this fall and you witness what you think are doe fawns coming into estrus and it causes a second or late rut uh, after the peak of the rut, that's a good sign and you're hunting a very healthy deer population. So I, I wish you luck this fall. Hope that you get to see a lot of that this year. If you enjoyed this video, I'd like to ask two favors of you. One, hit the subscribe button and subscribe to the NDA's YouTube channel. Second, go to DeerAssociation.com and become a member of the National Deer Association today. We're a nonprofit organization and we need your support to ensure the future of wild deer, wildlife habitat, and deer hunting. Thank you very much.